Here in the Democratic state of New York, NYC, says de Blasio, NYC threatens to shut non-essential businesses in COVID hotspots if cases keep rising. And of course, they use the term cases. Right? They keep saying this, as someone tests positive, oh, look at the dogs. As someone tests positive, they refer to them as a case. And of course, this is an inappropriate use of a medical term because a case is opened when a person, of course, has positive for whatever, they test positive for the flu or any other disease for that matter, right? So they test positive and then that person requires hospitalization and a case, right, is opened for that patient where everything is documented of what that patient needed. And of course, this isn't the case in NYC where every individual, of course, that they say tests positive, of course, is now a case. These individuals are not going into the hospital setting. How do we know? Because every single day, Cuomo comes on comes onto Twitter and onto YouTube, and he talks about new, what what the cases are. Right as you can see, total hospitalizations five hundred four, almost eighty five thousand people tested, only eight hundred and sixty six tested positive. Of course, this doesn't take into account the number of false positives, right? Where these swabs, especially if they're using the rapid test, the rapid test is very flawed. It's been proven by numerous reports by numerous studies that the rapid tests that they're using are very flawed same thing if the test of course um if the person maybe had some form of contact like i, I posted a while ago new york times several weeks ago showed that in new york it was new york nevada and in maine massachusetts that up to 90 percent of coronavirus tests were too sensitive showing that maybe the person had a slight amount of coronavirus and the vi and the test was detecting old virus not that the person currently was infected but that the person previously had it and there were remains left over within the body this was a report done by the new york times a while back i'll leave the link in the description and of course so every day cuomo comes on he tells us what the hospitalizations are and as you can see the hospitalizations are almost non-existent but we have of course good old de blasio who of course is threatening to take down non-essential or what he deems to be non-essential maybe you deem your job to be essential but of course uh the mayor deems you not to be essential according to him even though there are even though the hospitalizations as you can see even though the hospitalizations are almost non-existent he is threatening to of course close down where you work and this has been going on back and forth for quite some time and of course this is related to what they referred to as hotspots talking a little bit about um deaths right so sadly he says such and such uh we set on and the, 19 hours ago he said sadly there were six covid fatalities yesterday but they don't tell you how old these patients were was this a geriatric patient who maybe was at the end of their life when a person tests positive it doesn't mean that that person is in the hospital for COVID. I've had numerous patients. I had one a couple of weeks back, like I said, that there was there for dialysis. Patient had zero COVID symptoms, but tested positive for COVID. He was in the hospital for dialysis and he left COVID positive with a simple mask on his face and took a taxi home. That's been, I asked, well, is there any sort of special instructions that we have to give these people they're like i'll oh, just put a surgical mask on him and send him on his way and he went home in a taxi right so this is what i'm talking about in cities like this where they have all of you wearing these masks for all these positive cases but, but what they don't tell you about is one what are the if they're in the hospital why are they in the hospital are they in for covid related symptoms how old is the person because age is important the vast majority of the cases that we had in New York City that were that were related to death were typically nursing home type patients, patients with a laundry list of uh, comorbidities like obesity, asthma related symptoms, COPD, high blood pressure, diabetes, high cholesterol, heart failure, acute kidney disease or chronic kidney disease. Many of these individuals were not healthy individuals. They were people who were past life expectancy but this is information that of course your government your politician they don't give you and yet i still have people coming into my chat telling me well it's the law you should wear a mask 
and it's like it's a pointless loss that a pointless loss a uh, law that is just there to basically keep you in keep to keep you sub, in subjection it's literally just there to act as a restraint upon the american people they give you the littlest amount of information both the mainstream media as well as your politicians give you the least amount of information while threatening your livelihood right while threatening your livelihood while threatening your ability to go to work while threatening your ability to maintain your business with the least amount of information much of the information that is probably inaccurate to begin with is probably inaccurate to begin with because they don't tell you whether these individuals right when Cuomo comes on here and he says that there were 866 who tested positive but did they have any signs or symptoms or were these asymptomatic individuals right were these just people who just came into the hospital because now regardless of why you come into the hospital you get tested right so if you just forget there was a guy yesterday on friday i did some ot the other day and the guy had the common cold right he had the common cold and but he came in for a completely different matter right so he tested positive for the common cold they put a droplet sign he had to wear a mask etc it's like i feel fine right so this man came in for a heart related issue right because he collapsed and I believe he might have had a seizure. He was having a little bit of chest pain, right? So that's why he came into the hospital. But when they swabbed him, as they swab everybody now, he tested positive for the common cold. And he was just like, oh, okay. Do I need to do anything? And they were like, no, we're just keeping you on isolation because of that. And that was it, right? He's in, he's in the hospital for a completely different matter, unrelated, no shortness of breath, you know, he wasn't coughing, et cetera, right? He just tested positive, right? Because you can have a virus, right? In your body and your body is actively fighting that virus but you can still test positive positive. and so this is why i talk about a previous at the very least we're seeing a little bit more good leadership where we're seeing the florida governor completely opens everything up right removed all restrictions even though in some places in florida they weren't even following the restriction but for the most part we see that florida restaurants fully cleared florida bars fully cleared no restrictions on any of the businesses that are going on now and this of course is the type of leadership that you need because if you're not seeing a rise in hospitalizations right if you're not seeing a rise in hospitalizations which is what matters that's really what matters that was the whole point to flatten the curve right that was the whole point the whole point was to flatten the curve so that the hospitals don't like me like nurses like me we don't get swarmed with patients that i can't check in on all of my patients because i have too many patients for just typically what typically in a step down unit you're typically gonna have three on a not so great night you might have four on a bad night you might move to five and now you got to fill out a form of protest because it's not safe it's not safe for you and your license not safe for the patient and that happened during the pandemic there were numerous days we would come to work and you'd have fought you'd, you'd start with four you'd go to six right that's why they removed the documentation for that period of time was because to dedicate more of your time towards the patients because the patients were actually sick for the most part most of those patients were fairly old most of those patients were fairly old some were a little bit on the younger end maybe in their 60s 50s late 50s early 60s etc right so most of these individuals were but most of them had a laundry list of uh, comorbidities so as you can see even here in new york right the hospitalization the curve is flattened it's been flattened for months but as you can see lawmakers will introduce laws they'll start making up stories the mainstream media will come on tv and talk about cases 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 but it's not true because if there were cases you'd see it in the rise in hospitalization because that's what a case is so instead of saying the rise in positive tests, they use medical terminology to, to pretend that there is an indication where more people are becoming sick. We need to start paying, you know, being a little bit more paying attention and, and we need to lock people down and make sure everybody's wearing a mask and start handing out fines for these things. But the reality of what's going on in the hospitals is I would probably be more worried about losing my job because of not enough patients than actually worrying about having too many patients at one point where everything was going where they were media was going back and forth and they were going crazy we had a very low census for multiple days and there was numerous talks of the hospitals going um basically 
thinking of letting people go or furloughing people because we had no patience for, for quite some time. There was many weeks where we had a really low census. And thankfully, the, the census started to pick back up as basically patients who were not COVID related because people were afraid to come to the hospital started to come back to the hospital. And of course, the census, of course, started to build up. I have not seen a COVID patient in quite some time that was not a geriatric patient that did not have a laundry list of comorbidities. I have not seen one in months, probably three months at this point. Here in New York City, where I work, and I work at a major, I work at a major hospital here. And it's like that when I talk to other people, when I talk to other nurses. Most nurses don't come in contact with uh, COVID patients who are not geriatric patients. It's hit or miss whether they have signs of COVID. The patient might be dying, and of course, during the dying process, they're going to have. Uh, shortness of breath as basically the entire body begins to shut down and so the person is going to have issues with shortness of breath you expect that as the body tries to compensate as the body is basically transitioning from life and now transitioning to death and of course it's our responsibility to medically manage that so that the person doesn't become uncomfortable during the dying process in any event for a lot of you people that are out there that keep talking about well this is the law etc it is, it is a law that is primarily around to control individuals. There's a narrative that is being painted for you. Because if they really wanted to tell you what was going on, this is the sort of information that they would give you. He, you know, Cuomo would come on and say, yes, we had 500 and so on uh, that, that tested positive, but none of them required hospitalizations, or 20 of them required hospitalizations, or 100 of them required hospitalizations. And of those 100 most of those were geriatric patients, right? This is the sort of information that you, the public, could utilize to then think, okay, it's mostly old people. It's mostly people who have a laundry list of comorbidities. I'm a very healthy individual, so I can go out there. I really don't have much to worry about, right? Whereas maybe when you go to visit your grandmother or you go to visit your, your sick aunt in a nursing home or you go to her home, you're going to be like, you know what, I need to wear a mask because she's more likely to get it from me and have perhaps uh, require hospitalization than someone like me who's relatively young. Right. But this isn't the sort of information that they give you. And this is why I keep on saying that if the pandemic was real, this is the sort of detailed information, not only that you would expect from your lawmakers, but you would also expect medical practitioners to be coming out and making this information very uh making this information very well known on a repeated basis. As they see non-compliance, they keep reiterating. These are the sort of young people that we're seeing, et cetera. But they're not doing that. When was the last time that you heard somebody, a medical person, who came on TV and said, you know, you are at risk as a, as a, young, as a young person, right? It hasn't been for quite some time. But when people want to go out and they want to riot and they want to, they want to protest, well, then the police don't go out there and enforce anything. In fact, they'll let them burn down your business. Like I said, you keep on, if you, people don't band together, this will go on for quite some time until the new narrative has basically worked its way into the people, right? For whatever reason, whatever the reason that there is that they're doing this, whether it's because they just want to keep people locked down, whether it's because they want to try and blame everything on Donald Trump as they make the choices, right? As they make the choices to lock their states down and of course have trouble paying off um, paying off their taxes and basically their their balance sheets get ruined because now they don't have enough re they don't have enough revenue coming in because just locked all the businesses down. They turn around and then of course blame Donald Trump that this is Trump's America, this is his fault because he was so late in shutting down and then when he wanted to shut down they called him a uh, xenophobist and a racist, etc. Just nonsensical. You have individuals like this, and of course, the governor out there, the governor out there in California, who have absolutely no idea what they're doing, but they're doing everything possible to take control over your life.